Yeah, so this is a very good question. Um, sorry. So we've just been through, as a species, we've been through a 120-year period that is unique in human history. And that's the period when we've been able to have exactly the same experience again and again. With records, with films, with books, all the different ways of recording. Um, this is unique. Humans have really never been able to do this before. Um, and we've been fascinated by it and intrigued by it. That's why we like loops. <laughs> you know, we're, we can't believe it. We still can't believe that exactly the same thing can happen twice. It's amazing. <laughs> Nothing in our evolutionary history prepares us for that idea. So now I sense we're getting a bit tired of it. So in England, for example, there are now three or four times as many festivals music festivals every year, as there were 15 years ago. And my kids go to a lot of them, and I ask them, why do you go? And really the reason they're going is because they know that what they see will never happen again. So they are searching for the unique. Recorded music to them is like water. They just turn it on and they don't pay too much attention to it. What they're really interested in is the special moment where something happens that they know only happened at, at that moment. So I think, in some ways, generative music partly shares that feeling of being actually like all other human experiences, unrepeatable. Um, you know, when you go and visit uh, a river, for example, it's not the same river you visited last week. <laughs> as Heraclitus so, so yeah, well said. Um, so the, the feeling is, I think, that we're slightly moving away from our fascination with the duplicate, with the replica. And we're, we're wanting experiences that um, have singularity to them. And the interesting thing about generative forms such as I described here, is of course I'm using the technology that was invented to make replicas to make originals. Um, so that's, a, that's an interesting step forward, I think. Now, the question of copyright, of course, is very interesting to me since quite a lot of my income comes from copyright. <laughs> um, and I've just decided that that period has passed, really, in many ways. We, we, were, we were lucky for a long time. Um, we can't expect it to last forever. You know, for, for 50 years, you could make obscene amounts of money in music because you were making something that was cheap to make that everybody wanted to buy. It's like producing oil. You know? Everybody wants it. You don't have to be very clever to make money at it. So, I think it's going to be a little harder in the future. And one of the effects of the... Uh, by the way, I think that there are still possibilities for copywriting, and there are still things that should be copywriting. But um, it's very difficult to imagine how if somebody takes my little app, Escape, and decides to score their new film with it, which they could do, and it would be better than most film scores that you hear. Uh, and a fucking lot cheaper too. Um, if they decide to do that, I don't really know that I have any claim to say, you only paid three pounds ninety-nine for that film. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want some. I don't think I have a right to do that really. It's it's a little bit like if I wrote a program, Photoshop or the program Word or Microsoft Office, I don't have a right to claim the results that people make with it, I, I think. So it's good buying, it's good buying big copyright checks. Yeah.